Good morning. Good morning. My name is Susan Pollocky, and I'll be your liturgist this morning. Would you please rise in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship? People of God, it is time to worship. To remember to whom we belong. One who rescues enslaved peoples. One who saves through forgiveness and grace. Both stories remembered in bread and cup. Alive again here in this place. Together, let us pray. Generous God, from bread and cup to, to faith, faith and, and giving, giving, we come today to recommit ourselves to your covenant, to be your people and your people alone. We come ready to worship you fully with all that we are and all that we have faithfully. As we begin this season of generosity, may the nourishment that comes most fully at this sacred table inspire our own depth of faith and generosity. Amen. Amen. Friends, our opening hymn this morning is the church's one foundation. It's number 386. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. and welcome to Community United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here, and we really mean that. Please, yes, have a seat. Settle into worship. We are so glad that you're here this morning to worship with us, whether you are worshiping within the four walls of um, CUCC on the corner of 6th and Daniel in Champaign, or if you're worshiping with us on Zoom or on Facebook, no matter where you are in the world, know that you are welcome here, and we really mean that. Um, you might have noticed when you walked in that some things are different. So because we have moved to yellow in Champaign County, um, our COVID masking rule has changed. It means that masks are optional here in our building. Um, you're perfectly welcome to wear a mask. Uh, and we want to create a space that is um, particularly accessible for people who must mask for health reasons. So I don't know if you noticed when you came in, there are some new signs. Tom Ward, would you point to one of those? There are new, like greenish blue accessible signs that have masks on them. And so the last four rows are for people um, who, who need to be masked. And uh, our public health director, Julie Pride, said, said it's good to put folks um, who need that kind of safe buffer space 
not where people are going to be breathing forward on them. So, so that's why that section is there. But we also have another um, accessible space. You might notice that we took out part of a pew here in front, and so we have, um, we have one in the back, one here in the middle, and one in the very front spaces that are accessible for folks who use wheelchairs. Um, right? Which is really exciting. And if we need to do more, we will do more. Um, a word about worship today, that we are beginning um, a, a many-week series called um, from, oh, I'm going to get the words wrong, from bread and cup to faith and giving. Um, and this is our stewardship um, worship series. It's our season of generosity. And so every week we're going to deal with a different table story and talk about how it's from this table that we are able um, to live faithful lives and to be generous in doing so. Um, so that begins today. One last note this morning, I just want to remind you that today the lower level is off limits to anybody other than our OWL students and teachers. OWL stands for Our Whole Lives. It's our sexuality education program. We had 15 youth and all the teachers here last night. I did not get home until after midnight. Um, so I could just stand up and tell you to be generous and then sit down, but I, I will not do that. Um, but they're having a fantastic time. Continue to hold them in the light of God's love this morning as we, as we worship. So friends, again, I want to welcome you to worship this morning. We welcome you. And who are we? We are young and old and middle-aged. We are gay and straight and in between and beyond. We are confused and inspired, happy and sad, street smart and college educated. Some of us can't pay our bills and some of us have more than enough to share. Who are we? We are the body of Christ. Together we are the church. And again, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here and we really mean that. Welcome to worship. We pause this morning in worship so that we can be honest about who we are, about what we have done, and about what we have left undone, trusting that God who is faithful and who is just will forgive our sins. God will forgive everything that has separated us from God, and God will restore us to new life, to righteousness. God will restore us in the good news of the resurrection. Friends, let us pray together. Holy God of covenant, in our worship and in our lives, we are called again and again to be light to the world as we tell of your mighty acts of past and present. We are called to deeds of love and mercy 
We are called to faithful stewardship of our resources. Too often we find that our witness, mission, and stewardship, rather than being robust, bold, and clear, have grown tired, weak, and confused. Forgive us and turn us again to deeper discipleship within the community of Christ. Amen. The good news is this, that we are restored to new life, that the resurrection did not just happen 2,000 years ago in a land far away, but it happens here in this place, in you, in me, in this community. That's how the resurrection works, that we are raised in new life, and made new creations in Christ Jesus. And so I declare to all of us today that in Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Friends, in the newness of life that we are offered, um, you are invited, if you'd like to stay in your seat, that's perfectly fine. Otherwise, you're invited to rise, embody your spirit, and move from the aisles and share signs of peace with each other. Peace be with you. be with you friends. I want to invite our kiddos to come down. Do you want to come down or do you want to stay with mama? It's okay if you want to stay there. Hi. Thank you so much. How are you this? How are you this morning? Oh, do you want to come too? Violet, Violet's with her dad this morning at his church. Come on. What do you have? <gasps> Can I show the people? I have a two-headed dinosaur that's come to the table this morning because Jesus welcomes everyone. That's perfect. So what is this? A table. A table. Is it any table? It is a table with a tablecloth. Okay, remember, you're in church. Give me a churchy answer. Is this any table? Oh, okay. Is it a special table? Yeah. yeah, it is. How can you tell? We've made it special. It's pretty, right? Where, and where does it normally sit? Do you know? It normally sits over there but we've moved it. Do you know why? What are we gonna do today? What's this? This, yes, this is a cup, and what's, something's hidden. What's that? Yeah, what's in there? What kind of drink do you think? It is, I wish it were coffee this morning. Just gonna tell you. There's not enough coffee to help Pastor Leah this morning. This is, um, this is actually grape. Is it grape juice or wine? This is actually grape juice, but it could be wine. And then what do you think's under here? Hamburgers? Bread. Very good. Do you want to see? 
bread. And when we're in church and we get out these, it's sort of a weird meal, right? Like it's not a full meal. But it is because of the way that we think about it. What, what, what is this? What do we do with this? Do you know? Do you know what this is called? Oh, that's okay. It's totally okay. What's this called? There are many words. Give me one of them. Eucharist. Good job. What's another one? God's Supper. Very good. What's another one? Communion. Any others? The Lord's Supper. The Lord's Feast. Um, and this is a special meal. Anytime we gather together at this meal, it's not just us, but it's anybody who's ever been a follower of Jesus, who's ever lived. They're all at this table with us, and Jesus is with us too. Where is Jesus? In the food and in the drink. Now here's the thing. Different Christians believe different things about how Jesus is with us in this meal. And you can believe whatever you want to believe about that. The point is, is that when we eat this meal, we are with Jesus and Jesus is with us. And we are together. And I wanted to know if you two would help me this morning by handing out the, what we have for communion. So we're, we're still doing, we're still doing um, pandemic communion. So everybody gets two grapes, because what do you make from grapes besides raisins, which are gross? What do we make from grapes? <laughs> they're, ju they're just oppressed grapes. I don't like raisins at all. What do we... Yeah, juice or wine, and then a tortilla, which is bread, right? You do? Awesome. You get one of these. Do you all want to help me? Okay, so let's walk down the aisle. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to help me hand them out, okay? Buddy, you get this side, Miss Kathy, and you can say the body of Christ broken for you. Hand that to Jean down there. Okay. You go hand those to Ramona and to Chase right over there. And you can say, this is the body of Christ broken for you. You can, you can hand it to people. Okay, you can hand that to Mark. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm going to let you hand them to these people here. Look, look that way. Look that way. Yeah, oh, go, go give it to her. Go give that down there. Oh, you can hand that to those folks right there. There you go. You can hand it to those folks right there. Oh, turn around right there. Oh, you can get them first, sure. The last shall be first. Just wait. It'll happen. Okay. Take these right down this aisle. Go, go. Who do we need? We need one. Okay. Who else do we need? Can you hand those down there? Oh, here. Here. Go hand that down there. Oh, no, he's got one. Okay, hand it in here. Why don't you go get here? You take, go hand those to the tech people. You can come right here. And then go take one to your mom. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, he has one. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Do you need one? Do you need one? You said you love tortillas. You need one. Take a couple. There's more than enough. <clears throat> 
there is a gift in being served communion by the littlest among us because no matter how it is that we experience this meal, Christ is present to us when we come to this table. After the sermon, we will offer up our joys and concerns. Your prayer requests will be offered aloud. Whether you are sitting here in the sanctuary or worshiping with us remotely, you're invited to add your joys and concerns to the prayer list. Go to community.ucc.org slash pray, which is a Google form, or scan the QR code found here in the bulletin, or there are prayer cards on the table in the back of the sanctuary, actually around the corner from the back door there, that you can fill out and hand to the usher. 
Whether we take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning it might hold for us on this day. Our sacred reading this morning is from Matthew 26, verses 26 through 29. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Together, let us say, may the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Friends, this year's stewardship theme, from bread and cup to faith and giving, gathers us around the table, feeds us, and sends us back out into the world week after week after week. But it also invites us to consider how the table changes us. And I say us, meaning us, because you can practice faith solitarily, but you cannot be a Christian all by yourself. You just can't. Our faith is practiced with the community, in community, as a church, by the church. And so as we consider what we will individually give this year, it's good for us to remember that it's good for us to remember that every gift is blessed and multiplied by God. What you give is multiplied exponentially by how we as a church steward our gifts together. And so, every week throughout this series, we're going to have a word from a ministry in our Community United Church of Christ about what that ministry brings to the table. Uh, and this morning, we have two of those reflections, one from Pastor Nate, uh, who's the director of United Church of Christ Campus Ministry and, um, and is working collaboratively with other progressive um, campus ministries here at UIUC. And also a word about what the tech team brings to the table, and that's offered by John Osborne. So let's listen. Campus ministry brings a lot to the table. Primarily what they bring is their whole entire authentic selves. We have these students who come from diverse backgrounds, diverse perspectives, diverse up church upbringings, and they come to this space because they find the welcome and the inclusion here nurtures them. And in exchange, we get to be blessed with all of their selves that they bring with us, their joy, their energy, their enthusiasm, their humor, their silliness. And that is a blessing for all of us. The technology team brings a couple of interesting things to the table. Uh, the first one that I, I like to think about is each week Leah does an introduction, a welcome, uh, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. And I would like to add to that, no matter where you are in the world, uh, you're also welcome. Uh, we have the technological capability now to reach anywhere, any congregation member, any visitor, whatever. So we can cover uh, the casual visitor who finds us on Facebook. Or, uh, we can cover the student in Finland, the campus minister student in Finland, who can come into a worship service in the middle of the night for her. Uh, we can cover the, the congregation member who is sick, homebound for seven or eight weeks at home, and yet can still be involved in the, in the worship service. Uh, the other thing that we're bringing is uh, some new technology to enhance the actual worship service in the sanctuary 
and on Zoom and Facebook, all those places. Uh, we have video capabilities now. We can put our graphics on the screen. There's, we've just barely touched the surface of what we'll eventually be able to do. And as Roger Wade, our chairman, likes to say, we were able to accomplish this on a fairly slim budget, all volunteer help, uh, using designated money that had just been sitting there waiting for us. So uh, it's been a good stewardship program, too, we believe, to uh, make all this cool stuff happen. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There's not one table story in our sacred stories. There are so many. There are so many table stories. But we begin with Matthew's gospel. The story of Jesus gets shaped in a particular way because of what the, the Matthew community was experiencing. The 80s and 90s were rough, and I'm not talking about like the 80s and 90s that we experienced. I mean like literally the 80s and 90s, the 80s and 90s BCE in the ancient world. It was a rough time, difficult, tumultuous times for the people who lived there, for the Matthew community. And the early church faced lots of problems and struggles. They faced a critical mass issue. Uh, the early church, in Matthew's context especially, they found themselves flagging in numbers and in witness and in stewardship and in mission. And yet, they understood that when Jesus implemented this new way of being in the world, that it changed them. It changed them for the good. That's how we talk about the kingdom of God. Uh, John Dominic Crossan, theologian, puts it like this, that, that Jesus came to implement the kingdom of God like a program that gets initiated and implemented. That's how we think of the realm of God, that it is not only for some far and away future it is a here and now reality that the followers of Jesus get to help make real. And so I wonder, what does the realm of God look like? What are the characteristics of it? When I ask that question, what do you think of? It's a real question this morning, not a, um, not a rhetorical one. Do you have any ideas? Oops. Oh, it's what? Yeah, it includes lots of people. What else? So, um, so what was just said, whenever I think of the realm of God, I think of Jubilee. It doesn't just feed their bellies, but it feeds their sense of hope and their sense of the future and belonging. Patty, I saw your hand. A charge to include all and support all, regardless of all kinds of barriers that we put up in this world. What else? What does the realm of God look like? What are its characteristics? How do you know it when you see it? 
Yeah, it's marked by joy and by hope and by belonging. Those things were, all, were already said. What were you going to say? And possibility. Yeah, the kingdom of God is ripe with possibility. What else? Anybody else? The realm of God looks like a place where sharing by all means scarcity for none. That's the kind of um, holy economics out of which hope is born. That's where belonging happens. The community of Matthew's gospel, they stewarded their gifts in particular ways. And we do the same thing not to further an institution, but to serve its purpose. The purpose is the realm of God made real. If you look at Matthew, um, you find all these parables, you find all these stories. That's how Jesus taught his followers then, to be able to recognize the realm of God. But we do the same thing, right? We tell each other stories about how it is that the realm of God shows up in the world. We talk about how it looks, how it feels. Jesus talked a lot about little things growing, about lost things being found. He said it looks like solidarity with the hungry and the thirsty and the stranger, with people who need clothes and those who are sick and those are imprisoned. And we have some of those same stories. Jesus is still teaching us through parables, through the stories that we tell one another about the way in which the realm of God shows up in this place. These stories might feel like a tall order for a little struggling community like the Matthew community. Except, except that they had this. And they believed that every time they came to this table, every time they shared in this meal, that the bread and the cup equipped them with everything that they needed to realize the realm of God in their midst. And so I wonder, I wonder if we believe this, how it is that we believe this. Because I will tell you, community UCC, if you don't believe that, you sure act like you do. <laughs> you sure act like you do. And I'll tell you a story about that, a parable, one of our parables. And it's that for five years, Five years last week, we have extended this table into the community. Five years ago, we were extending that table downstairs when Jubilee Cafe was born. And then when the pandemic happened, we extended this table literally out the front door. It's where Pastor Nate and I stand every, every Monday with a table extended out the front door. God might host this dinner, but we're the ones who set the table. And this church has decided to set this table in the most extraordinary way. You choose to prioritize how it is that this table gets extended through time and through resources. That's how we steward all that is entrusted to us. That's one of the ways that we steward what it is that we collectively give and what it is that God blesses and multiplies. All of that happens in other ways, of course, and we will highlight those in other weeks, but it just seems so fitting, right? That last week we celebrated Jubilee Cafe's fifth birthday, and here it is, a stewardship theme that is literally about what happens when we gather around the table 
in the way that it is that our faith and our giving are bolstered. Do you know how many meals in the past five years we have served? Do you know? A lot. Amen to that. Does anybody want to guess? I hear 10,000. Do I hear more? We've served over 15,000 meals in the past five years. And what Jennifer said is true. We feed more than hungry bellies. And I have a story, the rest of the story, to tell you about that. So on Monday, one of our guests, who has only been coming to Jubilee Cafe in pandemic times, slipped this birthday card in to us. Blessed fifth birthday to Jubilee Cafe, it says. Now, I had been the one wishing everybody a happy birthday. I had been saying, happy birthday to us. Here's a $5 gift card and a piece of candy. Here's your meal, and we're so glad that you're here, and we'll see you next week. But one of our guests gave us this birthday card, which says, another candle on your cake, huh? Well, that's just like you, always adding a little more brightness to the world. Happy birthday. I thought, oh, it's a good, uh, it's a good let your light shine kind of metaphor. But they wrote in the card, too. And that's what I want to read you. Dearest Jubilee Cafe, blessed fifth birthday, May God continue to bless this beautiful ministry. Thank you for creating a place that we could come to every Monday to recharge our souls after a long week. The delicious food nourishes our bodies. The love we receive nourishes our souls. Heartfelt thanks to everyone in front of and behind the scenes working hard to shine a light for all guests. God bless your hearts. We thank God that while we live in a place far away from home and loved ones, we can come to this place every week where people truly care, a family away from home. Signed, your grateful guests with warmest wishes. Oh, it makes me teary because it's real. It's one of the ways in which this table extends out into this tired and hard world and a way in which what God gives us is blessed and multiplied through the lives that you share. We come to this table, and here we are given everything that we need. Will we give? Will we give in return? That's the question. May God bless and multiply everything that we offer. Amen.
We are invited to contribute to the ministry of CUCC or to the Neighbors in Need Fund, which supports ministries of justice and compassion throughout the United States. Offerings in the offering plates will support the mission and ministry of this local church, or as noted on the envelope or check in order to give. I'm sorry, in order to give, please go to www.community-ucc.org and click donate. Or if you're worshiping here in the sanctuary, offering may be placed in the plates or globes when you depart. So friends, it's a stewardship tradition here at Community United Church of Christ that every week we hear from CUCCers who serve as stewards throughout this season. Uh, and so this morning we welcome um, John Murphy and Kara Finnegan up to the lectern, and they will share with you uh, their own reflection on this year's stewardship theme, from bread and cup to faith and giving. My mom had many memorable sayings, and one of our favorites is, money spent on good food is never wasted. She meant literal food, um, cream of mushroom soup mostly, uh, but she also meant food as a metaphor. Nourishment, energy, warmth, love, community. CUCC has fed us and continues to feed us in so many ways. The church literally fed us while Kara recovered from cancer surgery 10 years ago. It feeds us the whole community through Jubilee Cafe. It feeds us in song. It feeds us in scripture. It feeds us in fellowship. It's all such good food. And money spent on good food is never wasted. This year's stewardship theme, from bread and cup to faith and giving, based on the table stories, invites us to eat with Jesus so that we might go out into the world in Christ's name. What does faith and giving look like in your life? How does community UCC help inspire and bolster it? We've received so much at the table. What will you give because of it? Friends, as we prepare to gather around the table this morning, let's rise and body our spirit and sing our communion hymn. It's Jesus Took the Bread, number 343.
Please be seated. Go ahead. Friends, this is not the table of community, United Church of Christ, nor is this the table of the United Church of Christ. This is God's table where there is room enough for everyone. And as we gather around our family table this morning, we do what families do. We share our joys and concerns with one another. We share our lives. And so Kathy is going to read our joys and concerns today. Join me now in prayer as we hold the community's prayers in our hearts. As I read our prayers aloud, please join me in the prayer, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd like to offer prayers that faith finds safety, love, and security in her new home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jean offers a prayer of gratitude for successful kidney transplant surgery for a coworker's husband this week. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We offer prayers of gratitude for Chase's return to worship today. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. <laughs> Jean offers prayers that even though our COVID transmission rates have dropped in recent weeks, we have several friends, family members, and church family members who've been diagnosed with COVID this week. Prayers for them as they heal, and gratitude for the vaccinations that have kept their cases mild. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Connie offers prayers for Mike, who's dealing with a third round of cancer and nearing his final days. And for Kim, who's dealing with a recurrence of breast cancer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, hear these prayers and those in our hearts. Let your many mercies shine upon us. Amen. Amen. Friends, in the scripture today, Jesus both remembers and creates. He remembers the story of the Exodus, God's gift of freedom, and he creates a new story. It's the story of Jesus' gift of salvation through this bread and through this cup. This meal reminds us of all of the ways God has been generous to God's people from the very beginning, offering us nourishments and hospitality, grace and love. May your faith be filled with the abundance of gifts offered in this simple meal. Let us pray. God, bless the meeting of hunger and generosity in all places. Bless the memories of all that is holy land. The place of Jesus' lineage and Passover custom, the land under our feet, all land remembered land honored, land with justice. Bless all that is communion, but especially what we take into body and spirit so that you can live and walk, sit, roll with us. Bless the great giveaway for which we are grateful. We open ourselves and pray the prayer that binds us saying, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We remember that Jesus gathered in an upper room, that the 12 disciples were there, but we can imagine too that uh, women and children were there also. And we remember this story that Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks and he blessed it and he broke it saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat and remember me. And in the same way also, we remember that he took the ordinary Passover wine, poured it out, 
said, this is my very life. It is poured out for you. And in that way, ordinary became extraordinary. This is the new cup a new covenant shed for you and for many. Take and drink and remember me. Holy One, we ask that you would bless these simple gifts, simple gifts of the field and of the vine. Holy One, we ask that you would take our simple lives by your grace and by your power, transform these ordinary things into extraordinary gifts of your joy and of your peace, of your love and of your mercy. May the gifts of our lives bless this broken world. Amen. Bread on your table is blessed and broken. As long as it is open to all, it is holy. Sharing love, we will never be hungry. Take and eat the bread. The cup on your table is blessed and poured like the overflowing of tears and joy. Drinking deeply, we will never thirst. Take and drink. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that someone taught us about the four directions. For we take the sacrament into us so that we can face the east and the north and the west and the south, not claiming to know what we find there, but asking that you turn us the particular way we should go tomorrow. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Friends, it's time for the commissioning of the community. It's that moment when we commission you to go out and be the church in the world. If you have um, something for the commissioning of the community, you're invited to make your way forward. I have a couple of things to share. First of all, I would invite you to take a look at the insert in your bulletin. There will be one of these every week. They're really lovely and thoughtful reflections by our United Church of Christ uh, and I think also some, some disciples of Christ, um, national staff people and local church pastors. This first one um, is from my good friend Piwa, um, Piwa Langini. It's a really um, lovely reflection on what this table means. Um, come on up, y'all. Um, if you don't have plans on Friday, October 21st, would you join me over in Westville at Trinity United Church of Christ for their annual um, coal bucket chili supper or chicken noodle soup, whichever you prefer. They also have the best hot dogs I've ever had. Um, so this is their big annual fundraiser. And again, that's on Friday, October 21st from 4 until 7 p.m. Anna. Hi. Um, a few weeks back, we applied for a grant, a capacity building grant with the Eastern Illinois Food Bank, and it got approved. Yay! So, as some of you know, we are constantly pushing up against our limits of what we can store in terms of the refrigerator and the freezer that we currently have for Jubilee. So, we asked the food bank that for money towards the purchase of additional freezer and refrigerator. And they fully funded what we asked for, right down to the penny, $3,470.72. Hooray! And because these are commercial equipment, they're arriving any day this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Um, I do not exactly have a time. I'm hoping it will be like Wednesday or Thursday afternoon, maybe, when I'm actually available. Um, they are going to be 81 and a half inches tall. We own, or 83 inches tall. We only have 79 and a half inches. Wow. So we will have to, they're on wheels, but we will have to tip them. I am getting an appliance dolly and straps and I'm pretty sure we can make this happen if we get a few more hands. I'm getting charged with moving a baby grand on Monday. So I'm pretty sure that we can handle some, some appliances. <laughs> so. If you're available, please let me know. So, thanks. Thanks, Anna. What good news. Thank you so much. David. All right. So, uh, even though I missed it, I know that the Middle Agers, the Middle Ages uh, event that happened, I think, two months ago was a hit. And so, the next one is on this coming Friday, uh, which uh, October 14th. And it's at this place uh, at the uh, <laughs> oh, Gerstenackers. That's my house. <laughs> so we're in, Ur in Urbana. Uh, uh, there's a Sign Up Genius link there. Um, and I really look forward to uh, the AV team. We're going to have a little mil Middle Ages video the next time Fabulous. for the December event. I, I still picture that. But yeah, check it out. If So Middle Ages, what, we were between? So if you're, if you're too old for campus ministry, but you're too young for the retirees, if you're near Middle Ages, uh, then the Middle Ages bonfire is for you. It does not involve like jousting and that kind of thing. It's, just, it's a qualifier about age. So we will have a bonfire to stay warm. Thanks, David. Pastor Nate. Is jousting not planned, or is it actively forbidden? Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not actively forbidden. Okay. But, I don't, but I don't think our insurance will cover any injuries, so <laughs> at your own risk. I just wanted to uh, give just a quick, like, mid-semester update. Campus ministry has been going very well this year, and uh, Pastor Leah mentioned how we've been working collaboratively with the other campus ministries in kind of a new effort to kind of expand our reach and make a broader impact in our community. And I just want to let you know that that's been going really great. It's been wonderful to reach new people and through that uh, create kind of more of a critical mass and an impact. This last week, some of you may have heard there's been a lot of tension um, and some transphobia and things going around in the campus. And so being able to come together with other campus ministries and other campus ministry students and make a bigger statement of acceptance and love for all of our trans students in the area has been really wonderful. Uh, and so I wanna salute and appreciate the affirmations that our students were able to make to each other of love and acceptance uh, in the events that they went to. Um, and then also just a, a reminder for those campus ministry students who are here or on Zoom that we are going to be gathering after this and going on a hike and enjoying the fall weather. So thank you for all of your support, everybody. Thanks, Pastor Nate. Jean. I'm Jean Ward. I'm here for your mission team. And Susan already mentioned the Neighbors in Need offering. I just wanted to reiterate that um, we will accept that for more than just this Sunday. There is a drop down in the electronic giving menu that you can use, or if you write a check, if you just write neighbors in need on the memo line, then it will get to the right place. This is one of the national UCC's five for five offerings that are taken every year. And this particular one um, goes to some really important causes. They're using a, a good sized portion of it this year for indigenous peoples um, special ministry projects, and as well, churches can apply for grants through this fund to help facilitate justice work and work for the betterment of their communities. So um, it's a really important thing to give to if you are able. Thank you. Thanks. Any other announcements? Friends, I would, uh, again, continue to invite you to hold our OWL students and their teachers in the light of God's love as they finish up their um, their first lock-in um, and six workshops over the course of about 24 hours. Thanks so much. Would you rise and body your spirit, please? <clears throat> Go from this place knowing that God loves you so very much, 
that Jesus came to give us life and to give it abundantly, and that the Holy Spirit surrounds you this day and all days. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen.